What's up, everybody? This is Matt for the TechnoAx channel with an update for you guys on March 29th of 2015. How are you guys doing? Well, this is going to be a bit of a long rambly vlog um, kind of update just because there's a lot of things that have been happening and a lot of thoughts on my mind right now. Uh, last update that I provided for you guys, um, I was in the midst of moving. I had just gone to PAX East and uh, I had uh, done a little bit of that. And then right afterwards, I flew to the West Coast. Um, more specifically, the Northwest. It's a little bit rainy here. I, I'm told that it, it will be a lot nicer during the summer, and actually I've experienced it before because I've lived in this area before. But yeah, I, I'm, I'm, in, I'm all moved in uh, on the Northeast. Um, my musical setup is slowly coming back online. It's mostly fully functional. Um, the only things that I don't have right now are my guitars, and uh, they're being shipped to me right now. So I will get them pretty soon. Um, but just... Uh, I hope you guys are liking the music that has come out of my channel since I've moved. It, it's a bit of a challenge trying to write music and uh, do this whole moving process as well. Uh, a couple songs I wrote literally in a motel and, and um, it's, it's um, quite a uh, an experience but I'm glad to have a, more of a permanent setup for my, for my musical stuff. But first things first, before I moved, I was able to visit PAX East for one day. I visited it on a Saturday. It seemed like a good idea at the time. It was a little bit off the cuff, but the reason I went there, as I stated earlier in an earlier announcement, um, I, I, I went there to kind of gain a pulse on the indie game uh, development scene and try and talk to people and see what they needed in, in terms of music, of course. Uh, and uh, I was able to talk to a lot of the indie game developments and in fact I devoted my entire day to basically just walking around the indie game booths uh, not so much the the big ones the the mainstream booths that had all the Xbox games and, and all the mainstream games but I had, I went to a lot of the smaller booths that had a lot of different things going on there was actually um, an oculus Rift booth that had a lot shorter of a line to test out the Oculus Rift if you're into that. Uh, for me, I talked to a lot of people. Uh, I was kind of able to gain a pulse uh, as to what they needed. It turns out a lot of them need a lot of uh, music for Twitch streams in order to demo the game. And so I was able to happily advertise myself as a royalty-free music provider so people could actually do Twitch streams uh, without fear of being DMCA'd. Overall, PAX East was a good jumping off point uh, to give me an idea for what I wanted to do for PAX Prime. I live close enough to Seattle now that I can visit PAX Prime with really no cost other than the tickets and, you know, food services and stuff like that. So uh, it makes sense to visit PAX Prime at least one or two days to kind of uh, go back into the indie booths with a, a better message, uh, a more more complete idea of what I want to do and it's not necessarily I don't know if it's necessarily that I want to write music for them anymore I'm still looking at that but right now uh, time constraints and stuff like that um, I, I think that um, just advertising my channel as a royalty free music channel for gamers and, and gaming uh, uh, gaming developers would be a really handy thing for them especially given the feedback that a lot of these uh, indie game developers once again need open uh, to music DMCA to stream to on the Twitch and level. not necessarily things that will be that feedback that I've gotten from indie game developers has kind of given me an idea of where my place is I, I figure that for now I'm going to keep just doing royalty free music for you guys and um, I just advertise for the game developers that I am here and if you want to use my music to advertise your game over Twitch and YouTube you can actually do that. As far as writing music for game developers I'm still trying to get an idea on how, how to do that and still maintain my YouTube channel and my website at the same time. Obviously with the new job time is a little bit more constrained and I figure that I, my loyalties are for you guys and, and, and my subscribers and everybody who has used my music. Moving along, uh, I wanted to really quickly announce that uh, there was another collaboration between Kellerk and I. 
She came to me earlier this year with a song and uh, the idea to collaborate with another YouTuber called Charm, also known as Tainted Lore. So for the last month and a half, we've been basically shooting files back and forth and putting our input into the song. And I think the song came out pretty well. There was also a music video uh, that was actually made for it. It's on Kellerick's channel. I'll have you link to both the song and the music video in the description below. Uh, collaborations are few and far between, and maybe I should do more, but a lot of the times, um, I feel that I move at such a fast pace that my impatience kind of gets the better of me. So, nevertheless, I really enjoy doing the collaboration with both Kelric and Charm, and I hope, I hope to future that uh, I can collaborate with both of them. It was really an enjoyable experience, and the song came out really great, for all I'm concerned, actually. There is really a difference between trying to make music around some lyrics and then actually writing a song and then having those lyrics on top of it. And also, the extra input from other people can actually make your music a lot better sometimes in ways that you never expect. There is one inherent risk to being a royalty-free music channel and trying to collaborate with other people, however. And that's one of the reasons why I've basically tried to keep it at a minimum in, in recent times. Basically, that risk is, um, if you've ever seen a lot of uh, channels like Audiopad and Freebie FM, these are royalty-free music channels on YouTube, of course, but uh, they aggregate other people's music. Basically, they advertise their channels as ways for upcoming musicians to advertise their music. And what I've seen from those channels is while they do provide some really good music, uh, sometimes they have to take that music down because uh, eventually uh, a you know, musician or two will basically make it big and their stuff will end up in the content ID management system. And this forces them to take the songs down and you'll see a lot of the uh, comments on some of the more popular songs questioning uh, the music channel why they're getting GMCA'd and having no answer. And that's definitely something, uh, that's definitely a situation that I really don't want to um, have on my channel. I'm going to keep my music that I post on the TechnoX channel royalty free and that is basically what I'm going to do. It's There's no changing that because I promise you that. and. It's one of the reasons why um, I've gotten to as, as big of a, a following as I have. And it, it seems lately for the last couple of years that I've had to actually fight a, a lot of these music companies for people who've basically put my music um, on their uh, sites and put my music on their content ID management systems. I imagine that challenge would be a lot greater if I started collaborating with a lot of random different artists and then eventually some of those artists decided that they should get uh, a, a portion of your revenue because they used the songs that we collaborated with on your video. And that's why I keep my music collaborations really at a minimum. If you think about it though, though, everybody who's used my music in their videos, it's kind of a quasi collaboration because I do contribute the music that you use and then you basically shout me out whenever you use it and it's kind of a good deal for me and a good deal for you both. So really it works out in the end. So that brings me to the question of the week. I've been asked this a couple times over the last week and it's really kind of an interesting question is that a lot of people are asking me if I could do like remixes of stuff and could I remix like something like a Binding of Isaac soundtrack or some other music track that somebody likes it's an interesting direction and an interesting uh, question to consider because back in the day youtube had its playbook in which it instructed upcoming youtubers on how to get big and uh, they figured that if you wanted to do music that you should probably cover somebody else's song and not just anybody's song, but like a popular song, like something from Lady Gaga or, or Nicki Minaj or something like that. That's how you got popular is you did those uh, covers. And while that was happening, though, on the flip side of things, the content ID management system was also coming online. And so if you went on the YouTube uh, product forms, the, the YouTube help sections and stuff like that, you would see loads of people 
basically complaining that their videos were getting content ID matched because they attempted to do those covers. And so it was a, a really interesting oxymoron that YouTube itself was perpetuating, right? And it did work for some people. I mean, uh, Lindsey Sterling, for example, did almost exclusive uh, covers of other people's songs with her violin. And that's one of the reasons why she got so big. I'm not saying that it's the only reason why she got big, but in part, people were searching for those songs that they liked and they stumbled across her, her cover with her violin and then people shared that cover. But this does not work for a lot of the smaller YouTubers. And right now, um, given the, the, the size of people's audiences nowadays with 6 million subscribers and 23 million subscribers, I really still consider myself a smaller channel, even though I have 50K subscribers. Don't get me wrong, I appreciate each and every one of you. But as in terms of channels, I'm still small fries. Um, and even though I am partnered with Maker right now, I, I was part of their RPM program. I'm not sure what they call it right now because I haven't really paid attention to my network in a long, long time. But basically, uh, since December of 2013, when that content ID um, opening uh, happened, where their networks were starting to allow YouTube to content ID match a lot of songs. Um, the danger of being content ID matched for doing covers has kind of risen, uh, I would think. So we move from covers to remixes. And in terms of YouTube and its uh, interpretation of content ID match systems, basically remixes and covers can kind of be considered the same thing. If you use a portion of somebody else's song to do a remix, chances are that song, if it's professional, is on a content ID match database system. And it doesn't matter what kind of things that you've put over it to basically make that track your own. Um, a lot of the times the content ID to match system is really good at identifying parts to, to match and identifying as copyrighted material of other people's music. I did one remix, uh, actually, well, back in the day, in January of 2012, I remixed House of Pain's Jump Around. And I did add my own, like, signature. I added a lot of guitars, and I kind of cut sometimes to the original track. And it wasn't even the original track. I bought um, remix packs uh, that somebody else did. It was an offshot artist who basically was selling, like, remix packs where they had basically managed to get the same samples that House of Pain did and they rapped kind of in a similar uh, level as Everlast did on that music. And even though it was a remix and uh, the tracks that I bought were billed as remix material, it basically got content ID matched, that one track did, um, by two different companies actually. You can check that track in the description below and see what you think. Uh, admittedly, some of it was basically just me putting together the remix track, so it sounded uh, almost identical to the original track. But uh, I would also argue, though, if I had just done like the guitar remix of that one track, I would still probably be identified by the Content ID debt management system, and I, I still would have that on my record. Additionally, I'm always flirting with the idea of remixing Nine Inch Nails tracks. Uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Nine Inch Nails does have a website uh, that is very modern, but um, they had recently replaced an older version of the website where they were offering the studio tracks, the actual individual instrument tracks for people to remix and post those results on their website. And, uh, you know, technically that's what I would do. I, I would basically remix anything from Nine Inch Nails or Trent Reznor and I would share it, but it would not, it would be on their site, yes, but I would also probably post it on my YouTube channel and my website to share for all of you guys. And once again, the problem is that content ID management system. I don't know if these tracks are basically on the content ID management system. And I've also flirted around with the idea of like creating a dummy account where like I post these individual tracks to see if they would trigger the content ID management system. But then you have to question the reliability of the content ID management system. 
it's because just because you post those tracks online and it doesn't trigger it for you doesn't mean it will trigger it for the rest of us and everything i've had a lot of complaints that i've had to solve over the years of people content id matching videos that have used my music where that video itself that i had posted the music under hasn't gotten any flags whatsoever so that's one of the risks that is associated with a remix for video games like Binding of Isaac, uh, it might be a little bit of a different animal. Uh, mostly because like people who do Let's Plays don't want to be content ID matched for the music that's under that video game. And also the video game companies that are loving the advertisement that they are getting from these YouTubers playing their games probably don't want their their advertisement to go away because the YouTubers who advertise their products suddenly get content ID matched for the music that they are using on the video game. So that might be actually a way to go if I wanted to do some video game uh, music remixes and stuff like that. Obviously Nintendo is off the table. Uh, I've followed their, their, their exploits into the content ID management system and I want no part of Nintendo whatsoever. But for other video games, it might actually be more possible than, say, popular tracks or, or things that are basically under a professional studio. So that may be a way to go. And really, one of these days, I probably should set up that dummy account and start putting tracks on there to see if they trigger the content ID match system. And this way, maybe I can make remixes of other people's tracks safer. And some of you guys would get what you want. and it would maybe allow for a safer experience for those people who would want to use that kind of music on, on um, their videos as well. And honestly, it might be a great way to drive a little bit more traffic to my channel and website if I could remix a couple of songs that people are searching for on the internet. I do know that there is a website out there called OCD Remix, which is basically devoted to remixing soundtracks I learned that from Total Biscuit. He uses that music a lot on his videos. And so maybe a great way to have some fun and, and drive a little bit more uh, traffic to my channel would be to remix some of the video game soundtracks. As for everything else, I'm still on the fence on basically remixing professional tracks. If you guys have any comments or thoughts regarding the matter, please leave it in the comments below. I'll be sure to read everything and take everything into consideration. Last but not least, I've had a bit of an idea of something that I want to do basically for the community. I was listening to one of my songs and it's, it's an older song. It's called a, music, a Digital Music Celebration is what it's called. And I'll link that in the description below as well. But what I was thinking was is uh, lately, I've been basically making searches on uh, the mobile platform of people who have used my music, and there's quite a bit of stuff in there. And it occurred to me that I kind of have my own community here. And one of the ideas that I had is basically to make kind of a mix video uh, with maybe one of my songs in the background of uh, other people's uh, videos who have used my music. And I, I think and you may want to check out the music below that i'm talking to once again it's called digital music celebration uh, i figured that this would be a great track to make that under so number one i want to have you guys maybe submit some of your videos so i can basically use that in this video right here submit your videos for this and basically provide a link in the comments section i'll check it out i will make sure to clear it from the spam folder and, and make sure that your comment shows up on the comments on this uh, on this video but if you want submit your video of like video gameplay or anything really of um, you know your skits of your makeup tutorials of basically whatever you want your vlogs and um, I want to basically make a video out of it with like that one song in the background and you can basically suggest other songs, but I, I, I figured that Digital Music Celebration was probably the perfect track to do that. Uh, as uh, a music producer or video production is not really my forte, so this video would probably take a while to produce, but I promise that I will, pr I will produce that video by the end of April, I would say. So 
And if you know of anybody who has used my music, I know a lot of you out there follow people who've used my music. Send the word out to them too, so I can basically have their submissions if they like. And from there. All right, uh, I think that's all I've got other than my Patreon supporters. They are completely awesome. And I will see you guys next weekend.